So the new topic of the session is exploring geometrical figures. In daily life, we see so many geometrical structures which represent a sort of a shape. Say for example, I just have a fan. A fan looks somewhat in a different shape. I just have the fan which has it has four wings and sometimes they have three wings. So if this is the fan rotating, then I have all four blades having the similar shape. So what is that similar or what is that equality through which we identify the geometrical figures? Mathematically, when do we call the three blades to be same or equal in area? So when do we say that all blades are of same shape? Not in general, but in mathematical terms, we measure the similarity of the shapes through the angles and the lengths of the line segments connecting the endpoints is how geometrically we understand through the rotation or moving of the object is how we understand the concept of exploring geometrical figures. The first and foremost concept in exploring of geometrical figures is congruency. What is congruency? When do we say that two different objects are congruent? Say for example, let's start with triangles. We have seen many types of congruences in case of two triangles. So let's take when Now, the triangle ABC is said to be congruent to triangle DEF if the corresponding sides are equal. So this is one of the way through which the congruency is identified for a triangle <coughs> where two triangles are said to be congruent if their corresponding sides are equal, which is called SSS congruency. And the congruency is denoted with the symbol this two equalities and one cross line is how I understand the congruency of triangles. Similarly, when I have two parallelograms or two rectangles, I say they are congruent if their adjacent sides, corresponding sides are equal and each of the angle is equal. So in case of this, even the angles are said to be equal. So before we go to this problem, when two triangles or two different geometrical shapes are congruent, they are said to be equal in all respects. Their areas would be same, their angles would be same, the line segments would be same, the heights, the perpendicular heights you draw from one of the vertex will also be same. So there are many properties which become similar when two of the different geometrical objects are congruent. So that is how the congruency holds for triangles. Similarly, I say that rectangle ABCD is said to be congruent to D E F G H if I have the corresponding sides equal and this equal to this because the opposite sides are obviously equal. So one pair of this is equal to this and other pair is equal to this and each of the angle is 90 degrees then I have the two triangles are congruent and therefore they are equal in area equal in perimeter equal in all means even the diagonals would be equal if they are congruent is how i understand the congruency concept in geometrical figures now what do we mean by similarity what is the difference between congruency and similarity now two triangles are congruent implies they are equal in all respects but two triangles say for example are similar they are not equal in all respects but only in some limited properties say for example i take a smaller triangle and I take a bigger triangle. Now these two are said to be similar as denoted with this ABC triangle is said to be similar to triangle DEF if their corresponding angles are equal but sides may not be equal. So in this case the difference is that here even the sides corresponding sides must be equal but in case of similarity I have triple A similarity but I don't have triple A congruency because if three angles are corresponding equal then the triangles may look smaller and bigger but with equal angles but they cannot be congruent because their areas may not be the same. They are not equal in all respects therefore they are not congruent and hence similarity differs from congruency because similarity is the same shape which looks similar but may be diminished or magnified. So this is the diminished image of this and this is the magnified image of this. 
An object looking smaller in size is called diminished image. An object looking larger in size is called the magnified image of the object. So in that case, similarity is understood with being similar may not be equal in shape, but being congruent implies equal in shape is how I understand the similarity to start with. An hexagon might be so small, but might be similar with this big hexagon because their angles might be respectively equal in terms of similarity. The corresponding angles are equal. Therefore, I have each of the corresponding angles equal. Then it becomes that this object is similar to this, but not congruent because they are not equal in area or in, they are restricting with certain properties. Also, similarity has an interesting property in case of triangle, the corresponding sides will be in same ratio. So when I have similarity properties, I have the first property which says corresponding angles are equal as in case of angle A equal to angle D, B equal to E and C equal to F. Then secondly, the corresponding sides are in same ratio implies the side AB divided by DE will equally be same with the ratio AC by DF and this would be equally equal to BC by EF. That means under these two properties, if I wanted to identify the two objects to be similar or not similar, I just check for the corresponding angles to be equal as property one. Then the other property which I identify is I find the length of side AB and divide with that of DE and I get some ratio. Similarly, I find the length AC and divide with DF, I get the same ratio. If I get the similar ratio for all three corresponding ratios, then I can say that on these two properties of corresponding angles being equal and the corresponding sides in same ratio, the two triangles are similar or the two geometrical objects are similar. So these are the two testing properties for similarity. And what are the testing properties of congruency? Check for lengths of sides. If corresponding sides are equal, must be exactly equal. <coughs> and corresponding angles are also equal in case of the congruency. So these are the two basic properties I check for congruency. And these are the two basic properties I check for similarity of any two geometrical figures identified for congruency or similarity. So what is dilation? Dilation in general sense of mathematics means compression or stretching of an object. So if the object compresses, comes closer or it expands, this is called the dilation. So dilation is nothing but compression or stretch of an object or of any figure we take into consideration, the geometrical figures. So compression or stretch is what is called dilation. So before we come to this, if I have an object, say triangle, which is stretched into this, that means it's expanded, then this is called the dilated figure of ABC. So in this case, I identify that there is a stretch. Now the same figure, if I just have GHE, then this is said to be compressed. So when the object gets compressed, it is said to be dilated and in that case it looks smaller in size. When the object gets stretched, it is said to be dilated and looks larger than the original object. Here this object is stretched, looks bigger in size. This object is compressed, looks smaller in size, is how I understand the dilation. Now dilation happens with a scale factor. Now it is not that randomly I have the object increasing in its own means. Geometrically it has many properties through which it is understood in dilation. Now when the object is stretching, now what do you mean by scale factor? Suppose my scale factor is say k units, that means this object is stretching in all directions k units away. So this object is stretching in all directions uniformly k units away so that my original object when taken inside as ABC 
is stretching k units in all directions. So this is how I get all the k units expanded. So that is called the scale factor k. Expansion of the object by k units stretched outside in all your directions uniformly is called the scale factor. The distance through which the object expands. Similarly, the distance through which the object compresses is also the scale factor. In case of this, this is compressing in the sense when I have A, B, C here outside, then this is set to compress inside by k units, which is called scale factor. So finally, I understand the scale factor as the distance of the increase or stretching of the object k units outside in case of this, which is called the k scale factor distance. And the distance at which the object compresses inwards in case of this is called the scale factor in case of compressed figure that is dilation connected with scale factor. Symmetry in geometrical concept is called the identifying of the shape exactly to be similar if one half of it is similar to the other half we call it as symmetry. So for example I have a line of symmetry usually the line at which the object is sym symmetrical is called the line of symmetry. So if I take the line of symmetry then in this case whatever I draw here and whatever I draw here and whatever I draw here is similar exactly along this line it is said to be similar in its own means is how I understand the similarity of this. Now this is identified to be a lotus which is symmetrical from both the means and this lotus is said to be symmetrical along the line of symmetry. So finally I understand the symmetry as the line along which the object is similar both from left and right. So along this line whatever is the shape of the object on the left is similar to the shape of the same that object on the right side in this case makes me understand that this object is similar. Say for example, I take an object is this object similar? Symmetrical. No, I don't find symmetry between the left side and right side. So this is not symmetrical, but this is a symmetrical object which is identified in mathematics through the line of symmetry. Can you give me, there are many examples through which we can understand symmetry in real life. Say a butterfly. A butterfly is exactly symmetric along its wings is how I understand the symmetry. So symmetry in mathematics is understood through the line of symmetry, the line along the object where the object is similar on both means. So when I fold this, I exactly have this coinciding with this. So when I take it on a paper and when I fold the paper along the line of symmetry, then this line of symmetry would give me a whole book. That means this page is symmetric to this page so that when I combine these two pages I get a symmetrical book. So symmetry of the two pages is along the line of symmetry which comes exactly at the fold, the fold of the book. So similarity is symmetry. Symmetry is about the object which has totally been exactly the same when you fold the paper it has to be on the same similar file.